Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools and DIY channel. Hey, if you come across visible evidence of mold in your home, that means you can see it, that's one thing. But what if you can't see it? Well, you may smell it, that damp odor that accompanies the onset of mold growth. Today, we're gonna learn how to use a moisture meter to help detect possible mold growth. No, moisture meters can't detect the mold itself, but it can detect the areas that's necessary for the mold to grow, and that's moisture. So stay tuned. All right, so we have two types of moisture meters. We have the pin type moisture meter. As you can see, it has the pin sticking out right there. And we have the pinless moisture meter. The pin type moisture meter is pretty obvious. You have the pin sticking out of this front portion of the moisture meter here, and you penetrate the surface of your material with these pins, and it gives you a reading, okay? So when the moisture meter is turned on, electrical current flows from pin to pin and measures the resistance. So it takes advantage of the fact that water conducts electricity and wood does not. For instance, if you're measuring the reading in wood. So if the wood is dry, the resistance is gonna be higher and it will show more electrical resistance. Now, one of the negative sides of using a pin type moisture meter is that you can lose one of the pins, right? Or both of the pins because they actually screw in and you can actually take them out by unscrewing them. You can also damage or break your pins if you apply too much pressure when you press it into your material to get the reading. I think that's why they give you extra pins to come with it, okay? In case you lose one of them. Now the pinless moisture meter simply uses an electromagnetic sensor pad, that's this right here, that you place onto the surface of your material, right? To get the moisture content reading. Now it's considered non-invasive, non-destructive, uh, or non-intrusive because it does not disturb or break the surface of the material that you're trying to get the reading from like the pin type does. The pin type has to penetrate the surface to get that reading, right? This, as you can see, it doesn't have to do that. You just place this on top of the surface and you scan it and get your reading. Another advantage that the pinless moisture meter has over the pin type moisture meter, besides the fact that it does not penetrate the material, because let's just say you have some expensive wood flooring or something like that, that you don't want to damage with pins, is that the pinless moisture meter is also faster. The pin type moisture meter only measures the moisture content between these two pins, which means if you're trying to measure the moisture content over a certain area, you have to go like this. That's gonna take longer to get your measurement, right? Because you have to move from location to location if you're trying to cover a certain area. The pinless moisture meter is faster in that you only have to scan that area in a couple of swipes to get your reading instead of having to prick or penetrate several areas in order to get the reading with the pin type moisture meter. Now both meters work pretty much the same way in terms of function. You have three buttons on the face of each device, okay? And the middle button is the power button, the on and off button. So let's turn that on here and we can turn that on here on the pin type. Okay, once you turn it on, you wanna now look at this button here to the left. It says mode, see that? It says mode on there. That allows you to toggle between the different types of materials that you want to test. So as we toggle, we come to masonry. The next one would be hardwood, and the next one would be softwood, okay? So it has four different types of materials. Drywall, masonry, hardwood, softwood. Now it's resting on uh, some hardwood flooring here, so let's put it to hardwood. Okay, and as you can tell, it's already giving a reading. Why? Because it's resting on hard wood right now. Okay, 3.6. Now we can already tell that's pretty dry. First of all, if we look at the scale here, the dry wet scale, uh, it's on the green, right? It's right there on the edge of the green, right on the end there. That's 3.5% uh, moisture. That's relatively low. And you can check your manual as well. They give you a graph with the percentages of what's green, yellow, or red, okay? Green is relatively low moisture, 
yellow is in between and red is you know probably excessive moisture in that category so you have hardwood flooring which is what we just did and you have zero to 14 percent and 3.6 percent is the reading that we just got so we know that that's a relatively low moisture reading for the hardwood flooring okay this button right here the hole button as you can tell this one has one and this one has one on the pin type uh, allows you to lock this reading in place in case you need to move around and you don't want to lose your reading. Okay, so if you press that, and if you take it off the surface, you got to move around, it's going to lock that reading in there for you so you won't lose it. That's what the hole button's for. Okay, so let's take the hole button off. Now, if I try to use the pin type moisture meter on this hardwood flooring, notice we're not getting a reading. Why? Because this surface is too hard for the pins to penetrate, okay? Sometimes the surfaces of your materials are too hard for the pin type moisture meters to get a reading from just because of that reason. They're too hard to penetrate. The pinless moisture meter is just resting on the surface without any aid from me, okay? There's no hand pressure or anything like that, and it's getting the reading automatically there. So that's the advantage of a pinless moisture meter. You don't have to penetrate any surface to get a reading. I think the depth of the penetration for the pinless moisture meter is about three quarters of an inch. All right, so let's stick it into some softer wood, some softer material like this quarter round here. So I stuck it into the quarter round. Okay, that's the quarter round I stuck it into. But if I stick it into the baseboard, I get about 11% there. Still relatively dry as it's still in the green on the scale. Now that seemed to be an advantage that the pin type moisture meter had over the pinless moisture meter as far as access to the quarter round. The pin type moisture meter could get right in that corner, okay, and contact the quarter round, whereas the pinless moisture meter would have a hard time doing that. Now if we notice here on this wall, we have some uh, bubbling of the paint. We have some raising of the paint, right? And that is a definite indication that there could be a moisture problem. So we're gonna use our pinless moisture meter for that, but we're gonna change our mode to drywall. Okay, so let's hit the mode button. There we go. So we're gonna take our pinless moisture meter and put it in that area. And we got about 12.2%. All right, so that's not too bad. It's still in the green zone as we can see, so it could, just be a heat problem there, causing that paint to raise, all right? But if we go up to the windowsill, let's see what we got. We got about 14.5%. So, uh, it's still okay there, all right? 12.5%, still under the threshold, still in the green. All right, so this particular wall, at least this particular area, uh, well, look right here. Look what we have. We have 24, we have 25%. Okay, moisture level is a little higher here in this area, but that's still in the green. Okay, zero to 40% is still in the green there. So we're still good right here. All right, guys, I'm in a bathroom right here, as you can tell, where a lot of moisture can accumulate uh, behind the walls. We all know about mildew and all that stuff. So a lot of invisible mold can form depending on you know what's going on. So if we look at this wall right here, it's right by the toilet here, and uh, you have these raised areas, okay? Where's that coming from? Like I said, it could be plumbing leaks behind the wall, it could be humidity, heat, uh, and it could also be moisture building up, which is a precursor to mold forming, okay, in your home. So let's take our pinless moisture meter, turn it on. We got it on drywall, and let's see what kind of reading we got. Okay, so it's in the 20% range. 27% there, still not too bad. We move it down and around. Still not that bad, guys. So it's not always a bad thing here. It's around 30%. Here it's around 32%, okay? We haven't hit that that 40%. Ah, there we go, guys. We're over 40%, okay? So it's hitting the yellow. 
Okay, guys, so right here it's around 40%, okay? So as we can see on the scale, the dry-wet scale, it's uh, tapping into that yellow, that yellow scale, okay? So it went from green to yellow. So it's not quite in the red yet, but, you know, as we can tell, it is moisture here. Right here, we can see that it's uh, at 57%. Oh, looks like we found a red spot right here. Okay, so you want to check that out. It even sounds off for you to let you know. It's, uh, the moisture level is pretty high there, okay, in that area. So that's an area that you may want to check out for mold, okay, or excessive moisture could be mold forming behind there. Once again, moisture meters don't find mold, they find moisture, and moisture is necessary for mold to form, okay, so they go hand in hand. So if you see OL on your meter, that simply means out of limits or over range. That's excessive moisture going on behind your walls. All right guys, another area you may wanna check in your home for mold or possible mold buildup or for moisture is your water heater, okay? You wanna check the walls of your water heater or closet. You wanna check the floors. If you see any visible signs of uh, moisture buildup, that's great, but if you don't, once again, moisture can hide behind the walls. Just take your moisture meter once again and just, you know, if you're going around the floors, just put it on the floor if it's hardwood flooring or wood flooring. Make sure that you have it on hardwood mode and just go around the floors and check the moisture content around the floors of the water heater because once again, you could have water heater leaks um, that can cause moisture buildup around your water heater in your water heater closet. Also. If you smell something that's out of order, that musty smell that usually accompanies uh, moisture buildup or mold buildup, then you also wanna check for that as well because that's a telltale sign too. Checking the walls around the water heater there. Well, everything looks fine right here. Of course, you can do a more in-depth uh, examination, but for now, everything's on the green. It's 4.2% and uh, everything looks okay in here. Same with the refrigerator behind your fridge, on the floor around your fridge, check those areas as well. You know, anywhere where water uh, can accumulate. Under the sink is another one, guys. So you wanna check under there, and see what's going on. If it's damp, smells funny, that's the time to pull out your moisture meter and check it out. All right, guys, so that's how you use a moisture meter to find possible hot spots where moisture can build up leading to mold growth. If you learned something from the video, hit the like subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time.